Hey everyone, it's JC and welcome back to my channel. Today I have this very inexpensive card solely based on one coloring medium. Graphite. Yeah, pencil. A few years ago I taught myself portrait drawing with some help with a book uh, that has changed the way I approach coloring. I'll link it down below. But anyway, since then I've kept those supplies for pencil drawing. What I like are that pencils and even pencil sets are very inexpensive and relatively accessible. And it is the techniques that I have taught myself from pencil drawing that have bled into the way I color flowers. When I saw the large flower outline image and two leaves, my initial thought was how much real estate there was to create soft folds and movement in the petals. And the wonderful thing about graphite is you can erase all your mistakes. To me, this is the perfect stamp set to learn about coloring shadows. But of course, the layering images to this set make it versatile as well. To begin this card, I'll simply stamp the images in a light gray dye ink. In my mini Misty, I've got the large flower and two leaf stamps. I'm using limestone from the rock collection of Altenew Crisp dye inks. I've stamped these three images three times for a total of nine images. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was going to use all of these images, but I like having the extra just in case I changed my mind. I got this global art pencil case from Amazon a few years ago, along with these pencils from Blick and Derwent. Now, you don't need all of these, but let me explain a little bit of what I know about the graphite hardness scale. There are two ends of the graphite hardness spectrum, H and B. H stands for hardness and B stands for blackness. To further subdivide H and B are the numbers 1 to 10 in most cases. 1 being the least extreme and 10 being the most. So on the two opposing ends of the graphite scale are 10H and 10B, with F right in the middle. By the way, I don't have all those pencils, nor do I think you need all those pencils. So what is the difference between H and B? H for hard, a hard lead is used for details and will be lighter in intensity. So I may use 6H to get right into where two petals overlap to add in small detail lines or to add veins on a petal. B is for blackness. This is a soft lead used for shadows. You will get a darker intensity than H, so I may use 6B to fill in the center of the petal or add shadows. For my card, I used 6H, 2H, HB, 2B, and 6B. That's it. Think of this as your layering all to new artist markers with a colorless blender. In this case, my colorless blender is a blending stump. If you have never used one of these before, it acts as your finger to smudge and blend your graphite into the paper. The last thing I used is a small piece of a kneaded eraser. The wonderful thing about these kneaded erasers is that they leave no eraser residues like a rubber eraser, and you can mold them to fit a particular shape. So for example, I might pinch the kneaded eraser to get a thin point so I can erase the center of the anthers, for example. So all the pencils, kneaded eraser, blending stones, pencil sharpeners, all of the coloring materials for this card can come in a set at your local store. Now, due to the nature of graphite, this card is not going to go through the mail well. If you're planning on mailing a card made with graphite, I would put the card in a protective plastic sleeve prior to placing it in an envelope. Or, of course, there's always the hand delivery option if you can. I'm going to put on some music and let you all enjoy the coloring process. I'll meet you back here in a bit.
So now that I have all these flowers colored, I'll move on to cutting them out. This Altenu Grateful Hearts stamp set also has a coordinating mask stencil and die set if you would like to approach the stamp set differently. But for me, I used my swivel knife to cut out these images. I finally linked the one that I use in the description box below. So thank you so much to all of you who have asked and been patient with my response. And once I get these images cut out with my swivel knife, I realized I wanted more images. So off camera, I colored more flowers and leaves. Luckily, as I mentioned earlier, I'm glad I always stamp a little bit more than I need. You'll see in these two panels though, I only colored a few of the petals. Uh, you all know I prefer a biologically correct arrangement. So knowing basic plant biology, based on the illustration of the leaves, I assume this flower is from the monocot classification of flowering plants. Uh, monocot flower petals and leaves are in multiples of three. So in the final arrangement, I think I had nine leaf parts and three flowers with multiples of three petals. So you're welcome for that totally excessive bit of information. So I cut the other flowers and leaves with the swivel knife as well, and now I will begin arranging the bouquet. I have a video all about linear composition and how I approach floral arrangements with Altenew. I'll link it on the end screen. Before I glue down all my flowers and leaves, I'll add white splatters with pure white ink spray diluted with a bit of water onto my black cardstock background. Oh, and off camera, I did one more thing with the arrangement before adding press and seal on top. I noticed the leaves and flower petals were the same saturation. So in other words, I could not distinguish which was the flower and what was the leaf because they looked similar in color. So I darkened the leaves at the base with the 6B graphite pencil just to help give some dimension to this arrangement. Then lastly, I stamped the sentiment in the same limestone crisp dye ink and added it to my card. And that's how I made this card using the Altenu Grateful Heart stamp set. I have another iteration of this card over on my blog, and I'll link that below as well. Graphite is a great way for you to practice no outline coloring. I think once you get comfortable with the techniques of adding color with graphite, the principles and thought process remain the same with other alt-to-new coloring mediums, such as watercolor, artist markers, watercolor brush markers. I have no doubt you'll be successful in your coloring journey. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video. Here are some others I think you would appreciate, and of course, as I promised, the video on the left is all about floral composition. If you love this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much to Altenew for sending this stamp set my way, and I'll talk to you all very soon. Have the best day.